Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video, and it's a video that I've actually done twice now. And the first time, I didn't like it. And the second time, uh, as I didn't like it again. So, we're gonna do this for the third time, and we're actually gonna post the video, because I had the second one, like, uploaded, and it was scheduled, and then I kept pushing it back, and I pushed it back and I was like I I don't like it we're gonna redo it so we are back on tier maker to make another tier list but this is not for a unit it's not for valor cup which I still I know I still need to do um, this is comparing the overall metas against each other so we're gonna take earth 1.0 and I'm gonna rank it against water 1.0 and against light 2.0 Everything that has released up until now, which as of recording is 9 p.m. on the 27th of November. So we are currently smack dab in the fire meta, which obviously is not done yet, so they're not going to get ranked. So we're going to rank everything from the start of the game to the one year anniversary. So dark to dark, essentially. Um, we're not going to rank the OG units because they don't really fit into a meta. We're just going to do, you know... Dark, light, blah, 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 all that stuff. So I have the protectors of each meta listed. Again, this is not ranking protector units individually. This is ranking their teams. And over here, I'm going to have an image of the entire meta team. So the protector, the battle units, the free-to-play unit. Um, so that will all be shown so people can you know have reference points, right? And I'm basically going to be ranking them on how well they work together, not how well they run now. Right, because obviously, like, Light 1.0, Dark 1.0 cannot do shit versus Dark 2.0 and Light 2.0, right? That wouldn't be a fair ranking. I'm going to rank them based off of my individual experiences using them when they came out, how well they ran together, how, you know, how much synergy they had, and, you know, the power that they could generate in their own individual team, okay? So that's kind of how we're ranking here. We're, you know... One unit can be really good, and the rest of them can be shit, which means that the meta, unfortunately, was over was not balanced. It was balanced. The scales were tipped down to the, the crap end, and the one unit, I mean, they're good, but they can't save, you know, four other units, right? So that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and start off with uh, my least favorite meta, which is unfortunate because it pretty much shafted me the entire month, and that is Light 1.0. So here we go. We've got Soka, you know... Protector unit, guard, cost resetting, in a time when cost resetting was not important. All right, uh, Light Shizu was a single target healer and an attack lower, not useful. Leon can still see use to this day, yeah, but you don't have a dedicated nuker on this team to give a light boost to. Like, Hinata would be your only option, and she's an orb changer and a def defense giver. She's not a good nuke. You would put Gazel in here, and that's what you would do. You would buff Gazel. And then Mirren... Is a fair. She's an orb changer. Yeah, that's fine. Then that's about it. So overall, like, not useful. Mm, useful for the time, but not useful in you know large scales of the game. You is it? It just didn't make a whole lot of sense. It wasn't a very good team. Like you're gonna guard, but you're also gonna buff with your light attack and reset it, and it's just gonna be like damage over time. It 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 didn't work very well. So they get ranked dead last. Next team is Wind, which could be controversial because, you know, the power of Valentine. But again, like I said earlier, one unit's good power does not offset a whole bunch of other units' meh power. Um, Shuna is, she's giving guard again, so unfortunately a lot of the guard units rank low because we don't really need guard until now when Valor Cup is here. But, you know, back in December of 2021... We didn't need it, right? Yeah, the boss hit hard. Could you get around that? Totally. Was there a mission for guard? Yeah, but that's not meta-defining, all right? And she buffed greens by 50%. You know who buffed greens by 150%? Cabby, who also led wind, who also was a superior protector. Sorry, Butler Veldora is a fine damage dealer. He was an orb changer, and he had another skill that I can't remember, but he was a single target, and he was attack growth. Okay, fine. Made Rimuru for all the memes and all much shit I give him. I mean... 
I don't really understand it. Not back then. I didn't understand back then. And to this day, it doesn't really make sense with this team, all right? Raising skill cap, giving defense, or not raising skill cap, but raising HP cap, all right? We saw that return with Earth 2.0. It made a little more sense there because you had continuous heal and you didn't have to keep popping skills. Valentine, you had to keep popping her, her heal. And I, just, I, don't, I didn't really get it. We put the free-to-play Shuna here because she did fit, because she changed to greens, and she was free-to-play, and she was available during this meta, so I put her in here. Technically, she's an OG unit, whatever. And then, what, when she unhealed herself, and then also gave defense or something, uh, and then this whole team was, like, stacking green damage by 5% each time, but it, it, it's not significant buffs right there. Uh, Valentine, fantastic unit. Butler Veldora, pretty good unit. Maid Rimuru, not great unit. You're okay as a defensive wall, and you're just not good. And you're just not really that good. So that's why I'm ranking them second to last. The next team is Fire 1.0. Where are you? There you are. Okay, so the combina these three units worked well together because Milam gave crits and sealed crit resistance, so you they couldn't have extra defense against crits. Guy buffed an alt and also lowered crit resistance, so you've sealed them from having any, and now you've lowered it alongside Milam giving you crits. And then Gobta is going to take advantage of both of those by having crit, having alt buff, enemies have crit resistance down, and he has a 25% crit buff, damage, crit damage buff for himself, which would be great if he was an attack growth with a really good attack stat, but I'm pretty sure he's like either the high end of defensive growth or the real, real low end of balance, which means that his damage output is terrible. Because if you compare him with that crit damage buff to an AoE OG Benny Maru fire, and you put Milam's buff and uh, Guy's buff, uh, my Benny Maru out damages Gopta on an AoE with Gopta's crit buff on. That's not how you want your single target nuker to be. Uh, fire Shuna was fine. She orb changed into blues. This whole team orb changed into blues besides Guy. Guy's second skill was useful for one Jubilee, and we've never ever used it again. His defense seal, it's just not useful, and it's a waste of a 55 point skill. Um, fire Rimuru lowered fire. What did he do? He lowered fire resistance and buffed blues. Uh, he did something. He gave. I think he gave skill points or something. I don't know. That, that's how much I've used him. He's just not relevant right now. Even the fire challenge quest, even, yeah, that's out now. Like, you, you can use him. You don't need him. You just use Hakuro. You just use someone else. You just use a dark team. So, not not terribly good. Moving on. Dark 1.0, which this might cause some controversy, all right? But we have a lot of teams to get through, all right? Dark 1.0, for being the first meta in the game, came out like a week after the game launched, is a pretty solid team. Unfortunately, it was four banners, just like, you know, the anniversaries, or the half, and the half Annie, right? Yeah. Well, no, just the anniversary, four banners, because you had Shion and Diablo. For their time, good units. I mean, Shion was um, cycling blues um, and giving you alt gauge, so doing double duty. Diablo was your damage, even though he was balanced growth again. He had an attack buff, he had dark defense down. Uh, and then he had a single target orb change. Milam had a double orb change, and she was also single target and 15% chance to crit, maybe higher. Veldora was alt booster and pierce resistance down, so if you were running Dark Shion, um, the, the battle unit, you could you know benefit off that. Dark Rimuru was kind of unfortunate being AoE. He did have guaranteed crits, which was cool for a while, but then it got phased out. Dark Benny Maru reigns supreme as the best free-to-play unit for, like, four and a half months, five months, before they finally put another single target unit in there um, as, like, the best DPS. Overall, this team ran well because you were converting, you were converting, you were converting, so you could just cycle blues with Shion, uh, Diablo, and Milam, and then just keep getting your ult because you'd be gaining ult every time you use Shion. It worked pretty well. Um, so that's why it goes at number 10 and goes above these three. Next is Water 1.0 which was pretty much the introduction of our power creep kind of phases. So before water was light 1.0. And light 1.0 obviously was not very impressive. And then Chloe came out, who was changing to greens, 
giving us skill or giving us skill cap and giving us alt buff all in one unit triple duty on one protector which these units kind of didn't really do fire remove kind of oh, you did and you did but they weren't impressive this was pretty impressive a full hand of orb changing plus alt boost plus skill cap raise which will allow you to use more skill points which you'd be getting because you'd be cycling greens it worked pretty well alice gave pierce and water resistance down Raphael lowered their defense. Velzard has Pierce attack and uh, Pierce, well, Pierce power and attack buff, and she was an attack growth character. Uh, Ranga, you know, not terribly useful, but also had Pierce resistance down. I mean, when you combine all of it, you've got alt boost, Pierce, defense down, Pierce power and attack, and then Pierce resistance down. It worked as a team. If you get all these buffs active, you could do good damage. So this team ran pretty well, even though. I'm pretty sure that this is my worst shaft ever, Raphael. I went 400 pity and I pulled one copy that wasn't pity. All right, so in in 400 in 40 summons, I actually only legit summoned one copy, and then I pitied twice because I had to. And then Velzard came out, and then I felt really bad, because I thought Raphael was going to be DPS, because he was single target, and he gave himself pierce power as well. My mistake, you know. You win some, you lose some. Moving on. Earth 1.0, which, you know, Hakuro... Oh, no. Hakuro has reigned supreme as the best general protector in the game up until now, because Toa is out, and Toa just does what Hakuro does, and a little bit more. He is great. Valentine is great. Soe is pretty ass. Benny Maru, I mean, is okay nowadays. He was really good when he came out. He had the orb steal, so you could bring in, you know, you could steal two and make a six hand send of Valentine turn one. Um, he buffed oranges, which was cool. He was AoE, though, which is unfortunate. Soe was just not useful. This team has no orb changers except for Hakuro. You have, you know, orb stealer, orb giver, orb giver. And then DPS and you know the magic or the alt um, alt deny, but this team had no support for orb changing, so you're really relying on like using both of Benny Maru's skills to get Hakuro active, and then you start cycling alts and then you just kill. It made sense at the time, but you're not good. You're not good. You're okay. You're great. You're great. But I mean, that's the only reason why this team isn't lower, right? Because you have two units that are good, one unit that's pretty good. And then two units that are crap. So number eight, I think, is a fair placement in my opinion. Moving on to number seven, we have Space 2.0, of which I am missing. The only unit that I'm missing in the game is Rain. And to be honest, I'm not too, you know, I don't like her kit anyways. So I don't feel bad that I'm missing her. This team was very wonky when it came out. When it, we saw it on paper, I was like, what the hell are we doing? God, it's an AoE-focused meta, physical instant damage which we're seeing a return of with this fire 2.0 um i didn't really understand it but if you put all the pieces together guy is tr is double or well he's triple orb changing three and threes and a greens he's giving you 35 percent alt gauge which is more than Shion's giving you and he's giving that aoe debuff which all these units minus misery is an aoe unit so it worked out you're an orb changer you give frostbite which will enhance all of the debuffs that this team does all of the debuffs, just like Velzard in Water 1.0 gave a whole bunch of debuffs and then Frostbite came in and made it all better. Uh, Leon is your nuker, AoE. He's a, a selfish nuker because he gives himself an alt buff, but then he has his other skill. Uh, Rain is pretty much double support or debuffs, and then Misery is buffing greens and healing single targets. So this team, while being wonky and on paper and not my most favorite thing in the world, runs very well together, especially because of the power of Misery and Guy. Everything else is just extra, all right? So this team is middle of the pack, but still fairly good. All right, next is Wind 2.0. Um, the units that refuse to leave me alone in any multi that they exist in, because now I have a 100 Gabaru, and I have a still an 84 Shizu, light Shizu. Anyways, whatever, unbiased. But this team can run well. Geld, one of the best free-to-play units in the game. Um, Dino is interesting because he has those two-turn double debuffs, which does help this team. And if you get perfect RNG, you can run 
like Diablo's three turn attack buff is crit, the magic buff from um, Gabiru, the, the wind buff from Trainee, her orb changing, her protection trait is very good because it's the first three turns, just like Light Rimuru. This team can run effectively and can put out some good damage. I personally don't like it very much <laughs> because Gabiru should have been a three and three to six blue and not a straight six, all right? Had he been a three green, three orange to six blue and not a six green to six blue, he would have been a lot better. Geld is very good. He covers, you know, he covers the orb change for oranges. Trainee is a special converter for orange and green. But I think this team would have ran a lot better had he been um, a three and three. And it wouldn't have, it's not out of the question, right? He is sandwiched in between light and um, and space, and then Earth, Hakuro came before him, and, you know, those are all better protectors, in my opinion, because they do much more. He gave 15 skill points, that's cool, whatever. It allowed you to use a, you know, a double big-time buff if you're running, like, Dark, or, no, Windmill him over here or something. I, I guess, all right? I guess. It's not my favorite thing in the world, so I'm going to rank it at number six. Next, Light 2.0. One of my most favorite teams to run. Don't ever get me wrong about that. I love this team. Not because of Dagrel, but I love the power of Shion and Shizu together and Rimuru. Shinsha, I can take take it or leave it. I, I'll, I can put Leon in here instead. But if we're just talking about the actual meta, this is the first time we saw, like, limited stacking for power advantage, right? Because you use low-cost skills, which pretty much all these units have low-cost skills, 15, 25 max, and every time you use a skill, you stack up pierce rate for Shizu and pierce power for Shion. So you can get 100% guaranteed pierce, and you can get like 50% pierce power alongside her own attack buff, and then you put pierce resistance down, you put light resistance down, you get a 10% alt buff with Shizu, you get maybe a 15% light boost with um, Shinsha or a 50% light boost with Leon. If you really play your cards right, you can get a 50% or you can get a guaranteed crit with the hero back here. And Shion can then do some, some dumb numbers in a very short amount of time. I like this team because I think personally it is the best burst, quick burst damage team in the game. That doesn't need like 6, 8, 10 turns to stack up. So that's where I would rank them. Um, I feel like I missed someone. Oh, I skipped, uh, okay, I skipped Earth. Alright, where's Earth? Oh, I ranked Earth together. Alright, so let's move everyone up one. Pop, 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 pop. Earth 2.0 is number 7, technically, so yeah, there we go. Earth 2.0, we'll backtrack, we'll talk about it. It was the meta of, um, a whole bunch of things that we never had before, and they decided to slam it into one, one meta, alright? We had skill resetting, we had counterattacks, we had stat swapping, we had poison, we had taunt. These are all things that we had never had in the game. And, like, both of you have stacking poison, like, you, you're redundant skills, which is fine. You have counterattack power, which you're giving guaranteed counters. It's just that this team only had one orb changer, one dedicated orb changer, and that's Aaron. So this team didn't run very well. You got a lot of skill points when you got greens. But if you didn't get greens, you're kind of fucked, all right? So resetting skill costs, cool. Counterattacks, cool. 250% uh, skill point gain on greens. Very good for, you know, it'll, two greens will give you like 70 points or something, which is great. But again, if you don't have greens, you don't get shit. Because blues don't give you a lot of skill points. Oranges really don't give you a lot of skill points. Um, Mirren, she needs, what, 10 turns to fully build up that earth attack? I wouldn't really consider that worth it. Uh, the stat swap, this team is very, very defensive oriented, so when you do stat swap on a turn, your 10,000, 11,000 defense Adelman and Mirren can really dish out some good numbers. Um, Valentine doesn't really help in that fact, though, because her, her stats are much more even. Uh, so stat swapping could actually hurt her sometimes. So it, it's just a wonky team, and it was a whole bunch of things that we didn't really need or want, and they just slammed it in. We got our first our first two like proper villain units um, on the same meta, which is cool and all, but they were kind of useless. Like during Jubilee, I didn't use either of them. I didn't. I used healers, and I used fucking made Rimuru. I didn't use Clayman, I didn't use Adelman. So it really limited their power. 
So let's move forward to Space 1.0. And we're going to put um, Rimuru and Veldora together since they came out in the same meta. So I'm going to count them as the same meta. Um, this team, before the Dark Part came out, was really, really, really good. You know, it, it emphasized how much power creep we had gotten at six months, right? Veldora, stacking space. Milam, still a fantastic nuker. The hero, still the best unit in the game. Carrion is a, a competent damage dealer and orb changer and buffer. Frey was our first special blue orb converter. This team ran well. He was converting, she was converting. You were stacking. You were buffing skill points on all orbs. So this team could run. It could run. You might get a couple hands of bad blues, uh, but the Heroes Rewind can pretty much save you. And then Drago plus the space buff, plus the crit, plus the crit damage here, plus the space damage here. Really added up. And then the dark part came out. And then we got another defensive-oriented character who also gave dark attack, who also reset skills, in a time where we didn't really need any of that. And it made no sense. And then we got... Diablo 2.0, who is fine. He has a personal alt boost again, just like Space Leon. But then his second skill was counterattack and counterattack power, but no taunt. So it's like you're really praying that someone actually hits him in order to make use of that skill. So And he wasn't benefiting from Space Voldora. Like, we hadn't... The last Dark Protector we got was Dark Shion. So it's like, are you, are you running him with Dark Shion all the way back down here, in the, the beginning of the end, beginning of the game? Not really, no. So I didn't really understand why they put them out. It was just a money grab and an effort to make Jubilee two more stages. I don't know. So that kind of held them back. I don't like these two units at all. Um, but I really like you know the the actual space team is very good. Obviously they're number three. Uh, moving on to number two, Dark 2.0. And I know this also could be very controversial because Dark 2.0 runs really, really, really well. It is missing, unfortunately, a magic orange orb changer, Diablo 3. D Dark Diablo 3.0, physical AoE. Ugh, what? What are they doing? All right. If, hmm. If you combine both him and Shinsha's kit into one unit, if Shinsha had the the dark attack and the orange orb change, mm, perfect. Chef's kiss. No, they couldn't do that. They couldn't make that unit that good. So, Veldora, fantastic. Milam, fantastic. Rimuru, it looks interesting on paper in proper usage. Ah, he's kind of hit or miss. His alt yoink is cool. I wouldn't really use it I wouldn't go out of my way to make sure that I have it. I Sometimes I'd just rather take the ult than use 70 points, because, you know, Shinsha costs 80. So, Isis, fantastic free-to-play unit, orb changing, boosting the greens like Misery does, but even better, because she's actually changing into greens that she can boost. Uh, it runs very well. Technically, you have the orb changer here, but just bring Aaron, or just bring Dark Valentine and just do Ooga Booga damage. Uh, we know what this team can do. It runs... It does a crap ton of damage in eight turns, because Veldora is, again, one of those stacking characters just like Shizu. Uh, but now instead of three turns, you have eight turns, and you have 70% magic buff, resetting skill points, giving magic damage. Um, and it, it he just enables you to do things the way you want at all times when you have the green buff active. Which then leaves Water 2.0 as my final number one team, because it is, in my opinion the most complete team, all right? Milam is buffing blues by a lot. Skill point gain by blues, 100% up to 500. She's stacking water attack, all right? Excellent, excellent things right there. She's also giving you 40 skill point cap. So you're just gonna stack up more points, more points, more points, more points, because blues are gonna give you points. Shuna, orb changes to blue, or orb changing oranges. Rimuru, orb changes greens. So you're covered both ends there. And Raymer has that orb steal kind of thing where he changes any of his orbs to blues. So if you already have used Shuna and you have a whole bunch of, you don't have enough, uh, whatever happens, you're covered. Because you can just swap Raymer in, change his new orbs into blues, and then you'll have blues, right? You've got orange covered, you got green covered, and you got his whatever other circumstance covered. 
Um, Shuna is also the alt buffer. Shion is a double 55 point support unit. AoE, fine. I'm okay with her being an AoE if because her support is Oonga Boonga, right? Guaranteed crits, magic damage, water attack, all right? All in one unit. And then Hinata has her own attack buff, has the 40% crit damage, which you're getting from Shion. And then she has that second skill, which lowers, which seals crit resistance, which is fine. And then stacks alt damage by 5% up to 60, which at this point you would just bring Dark Vow and do her 60% because it costs a whole lot less. But you have stacking water, you have stacking attack, you have alt, you have crit, you have magic, you have water attack, you have attack, you have crit damage. You have every orb changer, every orb changing covered. This is the most complete team that I can run. It, does it do less damage than the Dark Team? Yes. You can make it do more damage than the Dark Team, because Veldora does, you know, stop stacking after a while, and you can stack Milim forever. But, this has everyone. All the major players, all four units, all synergize perfectly with each other, and it allows you to do wonderful things. So, this is my tier list of all the current metas that are complete, um, I'll update this when Fire 2.0 ends at the end of December. But let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. I know other some people will be um, not happy with these rankings. But again, this is my opinion. It's, you know, everyone is free to use their own. This is based on my own performances and using them for the past year and covering them and everything that has come with doing this YouTube channel. So I do want to know your comments. I do want to know what you would change on this board. Because I'm genuinely interested to see how other people value these teams and value these units. So go ahead, rip me in the comments. I, I'm expecting it to. I want you to. But that's it for me, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you later.